Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant and good evening to you, wherever you may be. This is Comfortably Zone Radio, and you're listening to Dodgers Baseball, a tale of two cities from Brooklyn to Los Angeles. I'm your host, Peter Trunk, and my co-hosts, as usual, are Linda Wilson and Boathouse Bernie Rose. Hello, Linda. How are you? Hi. Fine, thanks. Doing well. That's good. How's the weather out there in L.A. or San Diego? Yeah, it, it's it's beautiful today. I mean, it's um, been um, just standard San Diego weather, low 80s. Yeah, it was beautiful here in Jersey, too. Uh, Bernie, how's everything down there in Florida? Hot. <laughs> Very hot. But we, we had a nice drive up from Key West today, so. Oh, good. Uh, it was enjoyable. I saw your pictures on your Facebook page. You looked like you had a great time. Yeah, we just got a quick little getaway. Enjoyed it very much. Thanks. There you go. That's what Linda and I do. We do quick little getaways. Uh, when I say Linda, I mean my wife, Linda. Linda and I get away <laughs> real quick. And uh, Linda, uh, <laughs> Linda Wilson and I haven't been away yet together. No, we have. Uh, no, I'm talking about my wife, Linda. I'm sorry for being so ambiguous, but we we like to do that. We don't like to go away for a long time. You know, we shoot away, we have a good time, we come back, everything's cool, you know. That's just us. Tonight, right. uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, Johnny Padres, who is held in the highest of regard by everyone in Brooklyn for oh, – yeah. uh, for um, one main reason, a few reasons, yes. but one main reason. Before we start on Johnny Padres, I want to uh, go back a little bit. Our last show was on Don Drysdale, and Linda Wilson was on assignment. And I want her tonight, if she would be so kind, as to just share with us a memory or two of Don Drysdale before we start with Johnny Padres. Linda? Okay. Well, the very first baseball card pack I bought had Don Drysdale in it. And <laughs> I think it was, I was eight years old at that time, and it was the same season that he had in 1968 when he had the consecutive innings streak. And that's really my enduring memory of him because I came in at the tail end of his career. So I, I – um, you know, he's always just been held in such high regard because he was part of that that great tandem of Kofax and Drysdale. And mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting because being being as it was that Sandy was a Brooklyn native and, and Drysdale was an L.A. native, it's kind of yeah. interesting. They, they, yeah. they, you know, represented two sides of, and then, you know, they both made, you know, such history in L.A. That is interesting. Yeah, but anyway, um, that's my, that's really, I really don't have a lot of memories of him except for that that streak. And I do remember, I think you guys mentioned it on the show last week about how Bobby Kennedy made the announcement right before he was shot. Yes. About, yeah, congratulating him for setting the record. Yes, he did. Yeah, that's something. Poignant, yeah. very, very poignant. Yeah. Well. Let's move on to a little left-hander named Johnny Padres. Johnny Padres pitched for the Dodgers from 1953 to 1969. He ended his career, well, he pitched in the major leagues from 53 to 69. He went to Detroit and then San Diego, but uh, basically he was a Dodger. And his lifetime record was impressive. 148 wins. He uh, pitched to a 3.68 ERA. In the World Series, Padres was 4-1 and one lifetime with a 2.11 ERA. Two shutouts in the World Series, by the way. During a regular season in his career, Padres had 24 shutouts lifetime. I was uh, shocked when I saw that number. I didn't know it was going to be that high. 24 shutouts seems seems high to me, and that 
that's wonderful that he did that. He made the All-Star team in 60 and 62 out on the coast. And um, my memory of Johnny Padres, besides, of course, shutting the Yankees out in Game 7 in 1955, which is the greatest thing he ever did, um, I met Johnny Padres. I personally, I coached baseball at Newark Rutgers and our our baseball team in 1980 and 81 and 82 we went to spring training we flew down from uh Newark to uh spring training in Stanford Florida and we stayed in the same hotel as the Minnesota Twins and lo and behold the Minnesota Twins pitching coach in 1981 was none other than Johnny Padres. And Johnny Padres, I have my picture taken with him. Um, That's great. Yeah, and, and, and drinking in the bar, Johnny was known to tip a few beers, uh, smoke a couple of cigarettes, and uh, talk about the, the old days. And I stayed up until almost the sun came up in the... Uh, in the in the hotel bar, talking with him in 1981, what a what a hell of a guy he was. He really was. He was a a real man's man. He he loved the ladies. He liked he liked his beer and his scotch, and uh, he was a chain smoker, which was not a good thing, but he could tell a great story, and um, he was just wonderful, wonderful uh, guy to meet. And uh, I'll always remember, as long as I live, uh, with our arms around each other, and I had my catcher uh, take I, – I jumped onto the field after a Twins game at the stadium, uh, the ball field, and um, I asked him if he would pose for a picture with me. And he said, oh, absolutely. And I handed my camera to my catcher, and uh, he took our picture with our arms around each other. It was really good. It brings tears to my eyes, really, because I don't know – there's something about Johnny Padres. He was just, he was like every man. He was just a regular guy, you know what I mean? To me, anyway, my impression of Johnny Padres was just a working stiff. He just, you know, he did what he had to do. He, he, um, he got ready. He did his job. And uh, more times than not, he was successful at saying, he, he finally married a girl named Joni Taylor. She was an Ice Follies girl. She was a big star in the Ice Follies. Uh, he married her. He won 14 or more games five different seasons, which is impressive. 18 games he won in 1961. And uh, in 57, the final year of the Brooklyn Dodgers, Padres led the National League in both ERA, 2.66, and shutouts, 6. So I'm just going to start off with those little tidbits about John, and uh, I'll throw it open to uh, either Linda or, 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 or Bernie if you want to add some stuff that you have learned about Johnny Padres. You know, I can't say that I, you know, have learned that much other than, you know, what you just said, but I do remember that that same the same season that Drysdale retired was when the expansion Padres played their first season, and he played for the Padres. So I mm -hmm. think he, yeah, I think that uh, Johnny Padres retired after that season. But at the at the time, I had no idea who he was, and I remember my dad telling me that yeah, he's the one that that got the Dodgers their first world championship win. And I thought, wow, that's, of course, that happened before I was born, but so it seemed like it was ancient times. But uh, it was it was kind of special just to see him, even if he wasn't wearing a Dodger uniform anymore. So that's my earliest well, story, of just seeing him as a Padre right before he retired. He also shut the yeah. edges out in the 63 World Series. I mean, you, yeah, I know you were only three years old, but he, he actually right. shut the Yankees out in the World Series while you were alive. So it's exactly. not like he did it before you were born. 
Right. I think my dad said that because it was the first. You know, it was the one in Brooklyn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brooklyn. That was the big Always. one. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that's why he told me that was the very first one. I'm, I'm certain. I'm certain of it. Bernie, how did was you huge. Did, Johnny? Uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go into a couple of things. Uh, 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 most of what I remember, he's always, you know, behind Sandy and Don, and even at some point, maybe even behind Claude Osteen. But they were the four starters at the time in the in yeah. early 60s uh, or to, into the mid-60s. Uh, although mm-hmm. Johnny actually didn't pitch in the 65 series that they won against those same Minnesota Twins, um, mm-hmm. but he was on the team. So he was there for 55, 59, 63, and 65, which were the four mm-hmm. championships they won in those eight years. Um, but it was just the magnitude. You can probably, at least, I mean, from city to city, I'm sure there's uh, tremendous and great stories. But the Dodgers were the bums for them bums for all those years, you know, and mm-hmm. – and then when they got Jackie and all those guys and they started getting good and they made all these World Series that they could never win, it just got worse and worse. But uh, you were looking at 50 years of frustration building up yeah. in Brooklyn, uh, mm-hmm. if not more. And that is what he did. He stepped up and got it done and won those two games in, in 55 and, and, of course, game seven. And yeah. – that, you know, I, I was too little. You know, a couple of years later when they moved, I was just that much older that I remember, uh, as I've mentioned probably a number of times already, the the craziness that Brooklyn and everybody in New York was feeling about them leaving town. But uh, so I can't really speak to, because uh, I was four years old in 1955. However, a, a fact that came out, today that I was surprised to learn was that in 1955, he became the first MVP of the World Series. Oh, okay. So that means pre-55, they never picked an MVP. Right. He got a Corvette, by the way. Yes, he did. (laughs) I think it was red. (laughs) But uh, Yes. But isn't that interesting? I mean, because all these things that everybody takes for granted, you know, and and you look at that year that he led the league in uh, ERA and whatnot, but there was no Cy Young Award given out at that time because that probably came in at around 60, 61, if I'm not mistaken. Cy Young? Yes. Was it it 50? That's true. Because it was the late fifties, right? Newcomb won. won it, didn't he? Yeah, because Newcomb won it. Yeah, Newcomb, yeah, Newcomb won, won it. Newcomb. Okay, <clears throat> but uh, but that only started in the late fifties as well. So people seem to, you know, they take things for granted or they just don't know because it's a long time ago, and we're getting yeah. old. <laughs> yes, we are. Think the alternative. So, but I thought that was so cool in in in, in trying to look up a few things, but. You know, when I was looking up things about Don last week, and then I'm looking up for Johnny this week, and not much was coming up. He's not as well known. Uh, and, of course, there wasn't much to find, uh, which was a shame. You know, really. Johnny Padres, Johnny Padres, if I may say this, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but it's my perception. He, even though he had great years out in L.A., he was more revered and and a big shot in Brooklyn because Brooklyn had Newcomb and, and Erskine and uh, not a hell of a lot more. And Padres was right there. I mean, he was there. Even as a rookie in 53, he was formidable. Um, he, he, was, he wasn't an arrogant guy by any stretch of the imagination, but he was very confident. He, he never he never doubted his abilities. He um, I remember the stories of when he got on the bus. The Dodgers met at Ebbets Field before Game Seven in '55, and they took the bus to Yankee Stadium. And on the bus, when uh, Padres he knew he was pitching uh, on the bus. When he found out that Mantle wasn't playing for the Yankees, 
He said, no mantle? He stood up, and he said to the team, just get me one run, boys. So all I'm going to need is one run. <laughs> and he How out. great is that? Is that cool or what? When he found out wow. Mantle was not playing because of his injury, he said, get me one run. And a lot of guys tell me that. Uh, Snyder, Erskine, people have actually told me that story. Of course, I've read it also, but people have told me that story. And um, I, I used to even say to them when they told me that story, oh, he was like a cocky guy? No, 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 no. He wasn't cocky. But he wasn't for, he had no false humility. He knew what he could do. And he knew with his fastball, curveball, and great change of pace that he could beat the Yankees. And with no mantle, he said, just get me one run. That's all I'm going to need, one run. You know there's a bronze, a bronze sculpture of Padres at the Hall of Fame? Is there? Yeah. I, I've seen a picture of it. Now, I was up at the Hall of Fame, and I never saw it. So I don't know I, I, when they put it in. Yeah. When, when was the last time any of us was at the uh, Hall of Fame? I was there like 20 years ago. No, for me, 2007 um, was the last time. So that's that's yeah, not too long ago. Do you remember seeing a sculpture of uh, yeah, I, Johnny Podges? I don't remember in, seeing it. Although you would Okay, in it fact, I've seen, mind, here's the I, pictures that I've seen. I've seen a picture of Padres, uh, like after he has thrown the ball in his Dodger, you know, you know, in full uniform and everything, after he has sure. thrown the ball. And then down the walkway, there's a, by the same artist, there's a sculpture of Roy Campanella in his crouch with his oh. uh, mask on and everything. And it, it's sort of like a pitcher thrown to the catcher. I don't know if it was there only for one year. I don't know if it was there on loan. I, I, right. you know, I'm, I'm not sure, but I know that it was there. I know that it was there. Now, whether it was taken away and sold or put into a museum somewhere, I'm not sure. But I know they were outdoors. These were outdoors, not indoors. Uh, Padres pitching um, and Campanella like 60 feet, six inches away, facing nice. us, catching. And I've seen many, many pictures of that. In fact, I posted a lot of those pictures of those uh, from different angles on uh, BrooklynDodgerMemories.com. Johnny died at age 75. Um, he, you know, people say, well, you know, he shut, he shut the Yankees down in game seven. He beat them in game three after the Yankees had a two-game-to-nothing lead. He beat them in game three in the 55 series. But how come during the season he was only 9-10 and 10 and he only made a few starts? Well, only in Brooklyn could a Brooklyn Dodger become injured as Johnny Padres became injured in 1955. In 1955, Johnny injured his ribs and missed more than a few starts because <laughs> the Ebbets Field ground crew were moving a fold, the folded batting cage out of the way after batting practice and ran right into him. Jeez. <laughs> and screwed up his ribs, and he missed like five, six, eight starts. How do you like that? Only in Brooklyn, as Red Barber used to say. <laughs> Only in Brooklyn. <laughs> it's just it, it boggles the mind. It boggles the imagination. It's just crazy. You know, uh, one is. of his starts in 1962. One of his starts, uh, Padres retired the first 20 Phillies he faced. Now, of course, it didn't work out to be a perfect game or a no hitter, but he won the game. But <clears throat> that was probably his. One of his best starts ever. July 2nd, 1962. He retired the first 20 Phillies in a row, which I thought was interesting, very interesting. And, um, you know, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but the 1956 Dodgers in the World Series won the first two games. 
Yeah. But it was a, it was a mirror image of 55. They won the first two games. Where in 55 they lost the first two games, only to win three in a row, and then split the last two to win it. In 56, just the opposite. They won the first two games, lost the next three, and then split the uh, last two. They won one to nothing. Clint Labine, uh Jackie Robinson's line drive over Enos Lotus' head, beat the Yankees one nothing. But then the next day, uh, Johnny Cux beat them nine nothing. Gary hit a grand slam. But um, the reason I bring that up is because the Dodgers played without Johnny Padres that World Series. Where was Johnny Padres? Johnny Padres was in the Navy. Why? He got drafted. Why did he get drafted? Unbelievable. Well, hmm. here's the deal. Here's the deal, which I I happen to believe this 100%. You don't have to believe it, but I do. Ted Williams is quoted as saying that Johnny Padres' draft board was were gutless for drafting him after the 55 World Series. Ted Williams claims that the only reason Johnny Padres was drafted is because he won those two games in the 55 series. Williams is quoted as saying if he lost those two games, his draft board would have said, who? Johnny who? But he was all over the place. He was on every magazine cover and every newspaper. So the draft board said, hey, I got a great idea. Let's draft them. And they drafted them. And the Dodgers had to play the 1956 World Series without Johnny Padres. And I oh. always like to think, I like to think, although I can never prove this in a million years, <clears throat> that if the Dodgers had Johnny Padres in 56 and they won the first two games of the World Series, I don't they see win. them losing – I don't see them losing that World Series if they have Padres. What do you think? Uh, I would have to agree. Wow. That is a great bit of information that I didn't know. Linda? Yeah, well. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah. Crazy wow. Stuff. That is crazy. I mean, they, crazy maybe they stuff. were Yankee fans. <laughs> well, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, one. yeah. I always like to look at Johnny Pye. I always like to look at pitchers' batting statistics, and I found just two things out. Johnny hit two home runs lifetime, both of them out in L.A., um, and he hit, his batting average uh, was 190. And you might say, well, what, what's the big deal about 190? Well, Drysdale's lifetime batting average was 184. And people always say that Drysdale was a good hitting pitcher. Padres batted 190 lifetime. Um, that's about all I know about Johnny Padres. I wish I could share with you some of the stories that he told me down in the uh, the bar in <laughs> in Sanford, Florida. Right. But I'm afraid they're a little bit R-rated. They, they deal <laughs> a lot with well. I'm, I'm going to put it like this. Maybe, maybe they're not R-rated, but they're certainly rated in my own heart that it would cast aspersions upon Johnny Padres as a as a person. And another way, he told me all the things like he used to go to the racetrack and you know bet his money on the horses, and he he would run out of money. You know, when he was younger, he would run out of money in the middle of a month or whatever because he was gambling and stuff like that. And a lot of stories about, you know, drinking a lot of beers on the road and on the on the trains and on the on the flights and all that stuff. So it's it's not really anything that, you know, would enhance his um his history. But it was real men stuff, you know what I mean? It was it was just very, very uh old school old school well, men tales. It. Not uncommon you know. in those days. Yeah. You know, sure. not not uncommon. A lot of that was was going on and it was expected to go on. And yeah. and until uh Jim Bowden <laughs> and uh <laughs> you know, his infamous book, uh right. you know, everything stayed behind closed doors, you know. Yeah. The writers wouldn't even write about it. No, they wouldn't think about that. 
Think about how things are today. Yeah. And think oh, about yeah. that writers wouldn't write. They wouldn't tell on guys. No, they wouldn't. You know, so they knew what was going on. Yeah. And so the guys could be doing all kinds of stuff. I won't get into what they might be doing. But right. but you know what I'm talking about. And, sure I do. You know, sure carousing around. Especially with drinking. today's headlines. Bernie, with today's headlines of, uh, you know, shooting your gun off in the in the garage, punching your wife, breaking a chair over or whatever, you know what I mean? All, all these telling. horrible, horrible stories that we hear of. Who knows? Who knows what the writers actually knew and did not report back then? And it, it, it's just not in baseball. It's in politics, too. It's, it's right. everywhere. Oh, it's in everything. It's in great, That's you know, true. Yeah. It's, it's that is crazy. true. It's, yeah, sure it is. No doubt about I mean, it. Look at what they go out to, to, to bring guys down today. I mean, yes, they, they, they do. think there's a story there. They go after it relentlessly. Uh, yes, they you do. Know. I won't mention any names, Alex Rodriguez, you know, but uh, <laughs> she went after him and, and, and she got him, you know. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, they probably were out there drinking and carousing around with them, you know, whatever they were doing. So yeah. it's different times. So Johnny Padres, I, it, I feel uh, that I lost out really, you know, it, it's just – in not seeing him at his best, I suppose. Yeah, he was uh, good. You know, but he was really I didn't good. See him, he you know, really I mean, was. I watch, right, right. I watch as much of the '63 series as I could, but you know, some of it they didn't have night baseball in the World Series yet. Right, right, right. So the only time you could see it was uh, on TV on the weekend, and the, the right. other games you were in school. So. Mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> Well, Padres was no Koufax. We know that. We know Padres was no Koufax, but he was a no. damn good pitcher. He was a damn good he pitcher. He was. I mean, Absolutely. when he went to the mound, when he went to the mound, Dodger fans would say, oh, God, here we go. Oh, no. When is Sandy pitching again? <laughs> Nobody said that. They said, come on, Johnny. Well, here we go, babes. You know, Johnny exactly. Padres was a hell of a pitcher. He's a hell of a pitcher. Look at them now. I mean, with all the injuries, you know, uh, it was five nothing, you know, when we went on the air here. The kid looked great in the first inning, didn't he? Uh, yes, he did. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, this kid's not afraid like, you know, Urias was. You know, Urias was nervous. You could see it. But and I blame Puig. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he, he's doing that all the time now. He overruns that ball. The guy should have been held at second base. And then the kid got all nervous. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, we're, 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 we're getting off the subject, but I hear you, yes. I hear you loud and clear. Um, <laughs> you know, what, what can I say? The, uh, um, well, yeah, let's, let's get back on point. But, uh, okay, what about the 59 series? Uh, what can you tell me about the 59 series? He had to have pitched in 59. Uh, you know something? I don't know what he did in 59. He won two games in 55, and he won right. two games in. He won a game. He shut the Yankees out in 63. I don't know if he won a game. I know Larry Sherry. You're familiar with Larry Sherry. Sure, won absolutely. Two, he won two games and saved two games in the 59. I knew he got two period. wins in 59. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he got two wins and two saves. So well, I'm not sure who got, who got the other wins. When I don't have that in front of me. I'm sorry, he wasn't he the MVP of that World Series? Larry he Sherry? Been. He should have been if he wasn't. I think yeah, he was. I'm pretty sure he was. I think he was. Yeah, I got very um, down. I think the first game, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not looking this up and I'm not I, – I have no clue, but the Dodgers lost the first game of that series like 15 to nothing or something like that. I mean, the guy who beat them, Shaw – the right-handed pitcher for the White Sox, came to the game on his motorcycle. That I remember. And Ted Klusiewski was playing first base for the White Sox in the 59 World Series. And the Dodgers just got totally humiliated in the first game. If it wasn't 15 to nothing, 
it was it was crazy. It was just like it was fifteen to nothing, and I said, "Oh my God, they're going to get swept. They're going to get swept." And lo and behold, it came right back, and they won. It was great. I loved it because there were so many Brooklyn Dodgers on that team yeah, that it, it gave me a lot of space. And the Mets oh, weren't born yet. It, it gave me a lot of space to still love them and root for them, which I did. And uh, I reveled in that World Series victory. Snyder, Snyder even hit a home run. Mm-hmm. That's another yeah. thing that bugs me. Snyder has 11 home runs in a World Series. And they nowadays they come, they, they, they tell you, Post-season home runs. Yeah. Well, you know what? It was Brooklyn a lot more. Dodgers, Brooklyn Dodgers never played in the post-season playoffs or anything. They right. won the pennant and they went to the World Series. Right. Okay, right. so Snyder has 11 home runs in the World Series. These guys yeah, are like, a lot. Uh, yeah. I, it you better believe Mickey. it's a lot. It wasn't for Mickey. It would look like a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, Mickey, Mickey is, got like obviously. 18 or something, and the Bay had 15. But Snyder is the only guy to hit four home runs in a World Series twice. He did it in '52 like and in and in '55. Hmm. Um, but you know, when they say you know uh, he's got 310 strikeouts in the postseason, well, that's because he pitched 258 innings in a damn postseason. You know, like a Yankee pitcher or something like that who's in the postseason every year for like a decade in a row. But mm-hmm. back then, there was postseason didn't exist. It was the World Series. That's it, the World Series. So I caution you young ones like Linda Wilson, when you look at the uh, totals, Major League Baseball totals for postseason, and you see victories by a pitcher or home runs by a batter, wait a second. Go turn back a little bit. If Snyder only had 60 at bats, and uh, somebody, you know, somebody else had 400 at bats, that's not fair to say postseason home runs. You should say World yeah. Series home runs. You right. know, right? So whatever. Those, those those numbers are all all balled up. And uh, um, well, another thing, that, uh, another thing that bothers me: who who hit the most home runs ever? Well. You know, you could say Josh Gibson, but I'm saying Major League Baseball, who hit the most home runs ever. And I know that I or anybody that I know that I talk to and converse with and party with or go to barbecues or weddings or go to their family picnics or whatever, right off the top of their head, they're going to say Hank Aaron. They don't, they don't say Bonds. They don't, they don't say Barry Bonds. It's just it sticks in their craw. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense to them. It's just like it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, it was so obvious that these guys were on something. I mean, hitting seventy home runs and seventy six home runs and oh, sixty six home runs and all this stuff. It was so silly. They, they they ruined it. They ruined it. They really did. To me, anyway. To me, to me, they ruined it. But that's just me. I, well, I it was a great time. Like a it, I it was a great know. time in baseball uh, because it was all over television. Uh, the owners yeah. really were behind it. They were all for it until all of a sudden mm-hmm. it became unpopular. And then they, they, then they act like they want to crucify these guys. Uh, I yeah. don't blame the players uh, as much as some would like, even though I'm not uh, a proponent of cheating, if you want to call uh, it that. Uh, uh, but... You know, it, it was happening. It wasn't illegal, and and it happened. And and they shouldn't uh, keep these guys out of the hall because of it. In in, in my opinion, well, uh, well we could do a, a whole show on that. Yeah, I know. Have a separate wing for the steroid era. You know, but if Barry <laughs> Bonds doesn't belong in the hall, then not too many people do. I don't know. But that's another story. And, then, another and, story. and over the and over the doorway in. To, to walk into that wing, they have a syringe on the top of the door or what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. A quick I, I, note, you I have to look you, it up. You and, I, you, you and I agree on, a, on many, 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 many things. Many things. Even off of baseball, we agree on many things. But there's one thing where I cannot agree. 
I cannot agree a separate wing for cheaters. It, it just makes no sense whatsoever. And it, there's uh, already people. There's already people in the Hall of Fame that were on steroids. I mean, yes. you can't. Could, could, could I prove it? Of course, I can't. I cannot prove it. But I'll tell well. you this. Go, go and look at, at, at Nolan Ryan's statistics. Go get a cup of coffee, uh-huh. put his statistics out in front of you, and look at how old he was on different years, how his everything was going down, 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 and all of a sudden he had the years of his life between 37 and 40. He, he was yeah. pitching better than he did when he was 22. And yeah. When he pitched for the Mets, he was 180 pounds. And when he finished up at the end, he was like 250, just like Clemens. I mean, it was obvious to me that, and he's not the only one. There's other guys yeah. that are in there and it, uh, they just beat it, you know. They beat it. That's another, that's another game though. That's an, that, that's another show. It's another subject. It is. But, uh, once you get me going on that, I, it's hard for me to stop. And, um, I just have one thing. Just to what we were talking about before, about how times yeah. have changed with the writers and everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. who did the writers vote in to the, world, uh, to the Hall of Fame, whatever, 30 years ago, or however long ago it was? Gaylord Perry. Right. And that was a big thing back then. He was a cheater. He threw yeah. a spitter. And, yeah. Uh, but they had no problem voting him in. They had no problem yeah. giving him a Cy Young. What in in, two, in each league was he the first one? Uh, you know, so yeah, these guys cheated also. I mean, I, well, I, I have to. You know what? You you make me you make me take a step back, and I have to look at myself in the mirror and see how just how uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm a hypocrite because. In fact, by, by definition, I am because I I don't like the guys that cheated with the steroids. And yet, when people would say about the spitter and uh, Gaylord Perry, it was like a smirk. It was like a smile. You would smile when you would say it. No one would get angry. They'd just go, they'd like chuckle. Yeah, like, that's <laughs> right. He got he got away with it and stuff. So maybe I am a hypocrite when it comes to that. Uh-huh. Uh, I have to I have to do some searching, self searching. I don't know. I don't know. But, but that, you, have it, a great you bring up a good point. That's a good point, Bernie. Yes. Well, it you know I, I just try to make comparisons and and and, and, uh-huh. and you see the difference in in how things are today and then and how they used to be. But yeah. Uh, I, I took a quick while we were talking. I just took a quick browse here, and Johnny Padres won Game Two of the nineteen fifty nine World Series. All right. What was the final there score of the go. first game? You'd love to know, wouldn't you? Eleven nothing. Eleven nothing. I thought it was fifteen nothing. All right. Eleven. Early win defeated Roger Craig. You know what? This is a great. Uh, a combination of L.A. and Brooklyn, this team here. Yeah, because absolutely. Because you got Roger Craig losing uh, game one, and then you have Johnny Padres winning game two, and then you have Don Drysdale winning game three. <laughs> and Larry <laughs> Sherry got the save, as you say. And then you have Larry Sherry winning game four. Uh-huh. And... Uh, Here's a very interesting somebody losing game five. Do you want to take a guess at it? Koufax? You got it. That was going to be my so guess. you know what? He lost. one nothing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he, he gave up one run, but he lost. And uh, then they went to game six, and you know that uh, Sherry got the win. Right. Dodgers scored uh, six in the fourth, and they were up eight nothing, and they won nine three. But uh, yeah. that's some great stuff because there's all these different names that that just take you back to L.A. and yeah. Brooklyn. Yep. Yeah, it was very easy sure. for a Brooklyn boy to root for those Dodgers in '59. Very, very easy. Like I oh, said yeah. before, there were no there, there were no New York Mets yet, and uh, half of the guys on the team were Brooklyn guys. You know. Right. I played at Ebbets Field, so we knew all of them. 
And, uh, <clears throat> you know, watching them on TV, you, you knew everybody. You knew everybody. You know, a couple of guys you didn't know. You know, this guy's new. This guy's different. But most of the guys, you know, you had Hodges, Ferrillo, Snyder. You had them. You know, Johnny Roseboro and <clears throat> and all those. Absolutely. Wasn't, that, uh, was, wasn't, wasn't 59 the first World Series that Maury Wills played in? Gee, I, I couldn't tell you that. Is that well, true? Well, he certainly didn't play. Maury Will certainly didn't, didn't play in play. Brooklyn, although he was signed. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. signed him when they were still in Brooklyn. I, I'm, pretty, he, I'm pretty sure. He played, and then they sent him down again for a season or two before he came back up. Is that what happened? Could be, yeah. Because yeah, I don't really remember him that that early, but you may be <clears> onto something. There's some great, you know, now that I'm looking at this, it's unbelievable. When you look at the names between Brooklyn and L.A., the Dodger yep. home runs in game two, Charlie Neal and Chuck Asijan, and then in game three, <laughs> you know, nobody. But in game four, Gil Hodges hit a home run. Yeah. And uh, in yeah. game five, uh, nobody. Game six, uh, Snyder, Wally Moon, and Asijan hit another home run. So, uh -huh. I mean, those names are all all over L.A. and, and, and Brooklyn. It's, it's kind well, of Well, that's cool. why we have our show, Tale of Two Cities. That's it. That's why I'm Brooklyn telling Brooklyn and Los Angeles. And I'm going to tell you right Absolutely. now, I'm going to warn you guys, I'm going to warn you guys on the air that next week when we talk, we'll talk about Junior Gilliam. How's that? Wow. Okay. Is that perfect? Sounds Brooklyn good. and Los Angeles. That's nice. It yeah. certainly does. The only Dodger to have his uniform number retired that did not make the Baseball Hall of Fame. Right. Right. Is that right? Amazing. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That does. Only the only Dodger. The only Dodger to have his uniform number retired that isn't in all of there. Every other number that's retired is Hall of Fame. Right. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Well, Which brings me to a is. question before we. Before we all say good night, I know, I know that Mike Piazza is going to go into the Hall of Fame as a New York Met. Yes. However, however, that being said, do you think the Dodgers will retire number thirty-one? Well, you know that's interesting because uh, a lot of a lot of fans have discussed that and. At one point, several years ago, and I think it may have still been when the McCords owned the team, at one point it was stated that they would, if he were to go into the Hall of Fame, that they would retire number 31. However, then he wrote that book that was very critical of yep. the organization, of Vin Scully even, who was supposed to be untouchable. As right. Far as criticism goes, he, he, he claimed that uh, Vin turned the fans against him, which wasn't true. Um, anyway, I, I don't know if they ever will now, but I, it hasn't been brought up this year, you know, since he was announced back in January as going into the Hall of Fame. I haven't mm -hmm. heard anything. I haven't heard anything about it since then, and I'm pretty <clears> sure <throat> that if they were planning to do it soon, they, we would have heard about it. I think they're yeah. they're, they're, hold, they're holding off because there was controversy, you know. So. I don't know, but I, I do. I can't imagine that they would. No, I, I can't either. And yet, at the same time, his his best years were as a Dodger. So, well, okay. yeah, yeah. No, oh, I hated to see him go, but. Oh, I did too. <clears throat> yeah, but what are you going to do? Didn't. That's. <laughs> I didn't hate to see him go because he he went from one team that I rooted for to another team I rooted for. Uh, uh, so I, yeah. it was a win-win for me. For me, it was terrible because it showed that the, it, just, it, it really underscored the fact that the O'Malley's had really sold the team because it would have never happened on their watch. You know, they no get way. New, uh, yeah, if they get new ownership, and what do they do? They trade away a future Hall of Famer who's in his prime years, just right. so they can, yeah, just so they can say, well, we did something to address the fact that they haven't won a World Series in a few years. Well. That didn't have anything to do with it. That was there's just gen, a general uh, disarray within the organization. <laughs> so it's hard to it's hard to imagine that they would retire it now. 
Yeah, I would have to agree. I don't think they will. <clears throat> I don't think they will. Well, we've come to an end of another great show. Johnny Padres, thank you for the memories. And uh, next week. Thank you. That Wednesday. was great. Uh, that's a great yeah. debate about that 56 series. Uh, you yeah. got me thinking now. <laughs> oh, yeah. They've never, exactly. yeah. they've never won two in a row. They've never won two in a row. Oh, man. Unbelievable. Yeah, well, I, know. Me, I, I want to bring up that this Saturday at Dodger Stadium is Old Timers Day. Oh. They have the Old Timers cool. Day. But when I was growing up, all those old timers were, were old, the older Brooklyn Dodgers, and now they're, yes. <laughs> they're guys like Fernando and Oral Hershiser. <laughs> right. Isn't that so younger than I am? Yeah, right. Yeah, I know. I know. Wow. Uh, but, uh, you know, I guess, you know, some other. Uh, you know, some other people that aren't going to play in the game, like Sandy Koufax and Don um, Newcomb, are, are going to be there. They're going to be yeah. like yeah. announcers or, you know, maybe just calling. I don't know what they're going to do, but they're, they have some part in the ceremonies before the whole uh -huh. game. It should be fun. Well, you'll have to tell me, tell us who gets the biggest hand. I will. Uh, I'll be very interested. <laughs> I will. Yeah. Um, you know, last year I remember. I remember Sandy was just. Uh, everybody gave him a standing ovation. You know, at the old timers day last year. So it's still. Well, yeah. You know, he's still, he's Forgetting still, Sandy, he's going to get the. But I mean, of the of, you know, like Garvey or. Uh, oh or yeah. Oral well. Probably, or. Probably, probably Garvey and Oral and Fernando. Well, those three. I mean, I Fernando, hear, right. Uh, it, has Piazza been invited to that? I doubt it. Um, I don't know that he would go even if he had been. Somebody mentioned, I don't remember where I read it, somebody mentioned that he was afraid if he ever came back to the stadium that he would be booed, which, yeah, that's a, possibly a good point, but um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think he would be, but I don't think he would go, and I don't think they would ask him. I think it's I like all old I think it's a damn shame gone. that they don't ask him. I think it's a damn well, shame. He was a great, he was a great yeah. ball player for the Dodgers. Well, he uh, was. He was. I mean, he he has a lot of. A lot I know of, he had. A, I know he had. I know all the stories and everything. He should go. And you know what? If they bull him, they bull him. But I but I doubt if they would. He might get some I don't think bullies, they would. But, no. you know. Well, he should, he should be invited and he should go. I, I, really I think should. that was that's an interesting topic. I think maybe if I can find the right people to address that with, I will. Isn't isn't Lasorda yeah. still very friendly with his family? Is Probably. it who? Lasorda, Tommy. Oh yeah. Oh yes, he is. Yes, yes, he was very. Is, close is he? To, is he I, still I, close to the family? I understand when, that. The way I understand it is that he is. Well, I'll tell you what. If he is, he, he could put the uh, yeah. He's he could the one talk and bu buzz in uh, Magic's ear and tell Magic, you know, this is what we got to do, and blah blah blah. I mean, that's if Mike is willing, and you know, he wouldn't yeah. do it if Mike didn't want to do it. You know, right. he would have to right. clear it with Mike first. You know, well, it should be interesting. We'll see what happens. I'll report Absolutely. back on. You there you go. Please do. You're our All right, so we're going to sign off for tonight. Thank you very much for your help, and we'll see you next week with uh, a show about Junior Gilliam, okay? Sounds great. Okay, good night, folks. Okay, Bye. take care. Bye-bye.